everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to try something new, and I'm going to be making my own acrylic keycaps. I was inspired by a bunch of different YouTube videos to try this out for myself, so I got all the necessary materials, and I'm ready to give it a go for the first time. Really, it's not too complicated to make your own keycaps, but there's some tiny things that you have to keep in mind. So anyways, to get started, let's first take a look at all the things that we need. We'll start out with the most obvious, the resin. This is just a two-part resin that I found on Amazon. I didn't do too much research on different brands or anything like that. It just seemed like this product was easy to work with because all you have to do is pour a 1 to 1 ratio. It's just a standard clear resin that should give us a nice transparent effect. Up next we have our keycap molds. These are silicon molds that I also found on Amazon. They should work pretty well. And remember to be careful when using them, especially when you're taking your keycaps out, you don't want them to rip. They are reusable, so I'm going to try to be as gentle as possible with them. And lastly, for color again, I just picked up some standard resin coloring. It's a pretty big pack with a bunch of different colors. The large amount of color variety should help me out for future use and for color mixing. Okay, now let's get started. I unpacked the keycap molds and I matched the tops and bottoms together. Keep in mind that these are for cherry profile switches and they do cover a couple of different row sizes. So a really great trick to do is to take a keycap that you already have and just put it inside the mold. And as you can see here, my escape key fits inside this mold really well and is flush with the bottom. So now I know exactly which size I'm using. Now let's get to pouring. Again, this resin takes a 1 to 1 ratio of parts A and B. Following the directions, it's said to pour each one out into different cups at first, and then pour both contents into a mixing cup. And then stir it for 3 to 5 minutes. Once it's thoroughly mixed, you can see that the color is kind of white and that's because of a bunch of air bubbles inside. To remove the air bubbles, I'm going to be using heat. I don't have a heat gun, but for just my purposes at home, I'm going to be using a hair dryer. So I'll just turn on the blow dryer and let it sit for a while until the bubbles come out. Unfortunately, I left it alone for too long and the resin actually hardened inside of the cup, so I had to start it again. This happened because I wanted to get all those tiny little bubbles out, and usually people would use higher heat, or if you really want to get all the bubbles out, you would use a vacuum chamber. But because I'm using a hairdryer, I have to kind of keep my expectations realistic. I'm not going to get all the tiny bubbles out, but I should at least get the larger and more noticeable ones out. So, of course, I had to mix the resin again, and this time I only heated the resin a little bit until the resin was mostly cleared of air bubbles. Once it was mostly clear, I started out by putting some resin in one of the molds because I wanted to see how the keycap would look with a clear top and a colored bottom. And for the other two, I'm just going to do purple. I'm not going to mix the resin completely. I want the color inside to be kind of streaky and not so homogenous. So I stirred the color in a little bit, but not completely. And lastly, it's important to get resin into the stem section of the mold. To do that, simply pour resin on top of it and then use a toothpick to make sure there's no air bubbles within the stem. I actually messed this up and had to take the mold off and then redo it. And once you're done with that, it's pretty much over. The recommended curing time for my resin was 48 hours, but I actually left it alone for three days just to be safe. I know it can be quite disastrous if you take the keycaps out early, so I want to be completely certain that they were fully cured. Now we can finally take a look at how they turned out. Remember to be gentle with the molds. I saw a lot of Amazon comments saying that they broke the molds after their first use, so I took my time and I was extra gentle getting them out. Thank you. 
to clean them up, I just got some clippers and a box cutter, and I removed the excess. One of them did have an air bubble at the stem, so that one is pretty unusable, but it actually still fit my keyboard. I wouldn't use it for a long time though. I would say the other two came out perfectly. Of course, there are those tiny, tiny air bubbles that I couldn't get out with my blow dryer, but other than that, I thought they turned out pretty amazing. Let's take a look under the light. Now you can really see how the transparent effect looks. The purple color has that kind of streakiness that I was going for, and if you look at the side profile, I think it looks really cool. I'm definitely going to try out more color combinations and things like that, but I just wanted to show you guys my first go around with it, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And I might even give some of these away, especially if you're a long time viewer of mine. As long as you're okay with paying the shipping, I'll happily make one and send one out to you. But I can't do it for everyone, so I'll just probably do a couple. So if you want me to make you one, leave a comment with the colors you want, and send me a Twitter DM or an email, and I'll get back to you. Alright, and that's about it for the video. Thanks everyone for watching, shout out to Patreon because you guys are awesome, and I'll see everyone in the next video.